This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Hello and welcome into another edition of Three Ma. I am John Kurtz. I have Derek Young with me today. We do not have Cole Mann back, unfortunately, but I think you guys can forgive us because we have the head coach of the catch, Jerome Tang, joining us here on Three Ma, and we much, much appreciate his time as always. And I mean, hey, the fact that we've got Coach Tang here on the pod certainly calls for a toast, and uh, you can do that with our friends at Holiday Distillery. Make sure you get your Ben Holiday bottled and bond bourbon. Uh, rave reviews for that all across Wildcat Nation right now. We hear people talking about it all the time. It is great stuff, so make sure you get out and try it. They also have 360 vodka, but uh, we're hearing all kinds of great things about that Holiday bottled and bond bourbon. So make sure you've got it stocked up for your tailgates or just for the lake. Uh, as it is lake season, basically, at this point for everybody. So, uh, Coach, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Uh, I know the the portal life can be a little bit crazy, uh, the way that life is now in college basketball. How how are things in uh, in portal season, in the heat of it right now? Yeah, uh, crazy would be a good description of it. And, um, you know, uh, hey, I'm not going to be doing any toasting. It's actually 930 right now. I know it's 5 o'clock somewhere, but uh, it's a holiday bourbon, you know, um, the Shout out to you guys, and uh, but uh, thank you guys for having me on. And uh, yeah, it is a little while right now. Uh, every time I'm on a call, I'm getting text messages that a couple other guys have gone in the portal, and uh, it's just just a constant uh, the the mouse on the on the on the wheel, right? Constantly running. Well, I'm sure at some point you guys shared a toast over the fact that you got CJ Jones locked down earlier this week, right? So tell us about the the newest Wildcat and why why you guys are so excited to add him to the roster. Oh man, yeah, just fired up about CJ. Just he's a terrific kid. Uh, you know, for me, St. Louis teammates with Buddy. You know, uh, just a winner, uh, talented. You know, I mean, a big guard. You know, with uh, length, size, can play multiple positions. Uh, wanted to be a part of this family, right? It was um, something that that he pursued as much as we pursued, and so uh, just that, I think it's going to be a great. A relationship he's got got a ton of upside um you know um talking to his former coach uh luke just bragged about uh, you know how quickly he learns things and how much he's improved and how serious he is about his game and uh, so it was uh yeah just just all all around as a staff we were excited you know about him and doug and we're excited about these other guys that we're about to get here pretty soon too also yeah, Doug McDaniel, you got just before CJ. What did you find out about him when you were recruiting him that maybe you didn't know going in? Are we talking about Doug or CJ? Doug, yep. Um, man, uh, you know, I watched Doug in high school, so, you know, you had some some things there. D- Doug, man, is just his family. is like they, they, he has this core family group that's uh, just incredible. His mom, you know, Don is – stepdad Anthony and his his aunt Dana and grandpa Skip just just terrific people man and they've got this core there that's that's really really special and and they support him and he loves them and the pride he has of being from where he's from and you know how he wants to represent them in the right way and and uh there's a real hunger that he has right now because he won in high school he won on you know, team takeover playing for Keith Stevens uh, on the Nike YBL league, and you know, at Paul the sixth, and you know, I mean, just just a lot of winning in his life, and going to Michigan and not winning the way he wants to. He's got this fire burning inside of him to you know to play in the NCAA tournament, to 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 be on a winning program, and you know, have a chance to win a national championship. So that, that's exciting. I know you like to use some of your current players and past players to recruit the the next wave. Can you use Doug to do that as well moving forward? Man, Doug, Doug is recruiting like crazy right now. I mean, he's he's on everyone, wants to know what's going on, uh, you know, giving us evals of players. And uh, he's very much like Marquise Noel. And, uh, you know, just, just one of those guys that he just, you know, he just wants to, he doesn't care. He wants the right people around him because he understands that winning will take care of, of everything. It seems from the outside that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that the the portal and the way people approach it has evolved a little bit from year to year. Do, do you have to change anything or, or have you changed much in terms of how you approach the portal now this year as opposed to last year and even obviously the year before when you took over? Um, well, 
you know, I, I, we didn't like the fact that the last couple of years, how long it's take. Well, the first year we didn't have a choice, right? But um, yeah. last year we felt like um, the lingering of waiting to get the whole team together, you know, probably, you know, we'd probably like to get that done a little sooner. And so the goal hopefully is to have the team together by, so everybody can be on campus for June 1. Um, but, you know, what I think as a staff we learned, and I know what I learned about myself last year is, uh, you know, just um, the, the the type of kids, like, like boiling it down. There's a lot of things you want in a player and stuff, but, you know, the things that I, that I wasn't going to um, compromise on, you know, and, uh, and so we, we really were searching for super competitive kids with high IQs, and uh, that, that's been um, just something that's been real important to us. Is it fair to say that, I mean, look, you guys wear a ton of different hats as a head coach, but that you basically have to play GM now, too, with, with NIL and how all, all of that works? I'm, I'm curious how difficult that that role is for you or the staff or, or kind of however you're you're assigning those responsibilities. Yeah, no, we do everything together, man. We do we recruit together. We game plan together. We do it. So we um we 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 go through this thing together, talking about you know how we want to you know roster um, make up you know how many guys play can play each position, and then um you know with, with the NIL, it's just about you know um how much are you going to invest or you know um. Yeah, I guess how much you invest. I don't know. There's a better word to put to use right now <laughs> yeah. in each each position, you know. And um, you know, it's just just is what it is. That it's something that we have to deal with. And I'm not against it. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm fired up. Um, the guys are have an opportunity to um, start the financial part of their careers earlier, and you know, maybe make some mistakes, but with lesser amounts then they have the chance to make later on in life. And, you know, that's all part of life is that we make mistakes and we, we figure it out. And I tell our guys all the time that, you know, um, you know, wise people learn from other people's mistakes and smart people learn from their own. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's just part of this whole life process. And people are concerned about, you know, young people having this much money and stuff. Well, heck, you know, some of them are going to be, just a year older and having 10, 15 times the amount of money thrown at them. And so, you know, I, I figure we can start these lessons a little earlier. In recruiting conversations now, do you still try to make a concerted effort to make some of this discussion with the kid about basketball and not just the financials? No, I mean, it's, it's all about basketball. Like that you got, you got, these guys uh, have bigger goals and dreams, right? Um, if this is going to be some of their their lifetime achievements, both financially and um, athletically, then, uh, you know, we're recruiting the wrong guys. Um, so, you know, we want guys who like basketball uh, is the thing and they understand that it could lead to so something more greater than, than right now. Um, you know, so, but, you know, then the NIL piece does become a part of it and you, just, you have to deal with it. You have to talk about it. You kind of started the uh, one more year chance for Dave. I think it was on senior night. It sounds like you're getting him back. I'm sure you're thrilled about it. What kind of impact does that have for your locker room and on the floor? Yeah, I didn't kind of start it. I was starting it. <laughs> no, I'm fired up about Dave being back, man. You know, there's, uh, there's no replacement for um, experience and, like, especially experience within your program, like, we understand Dave and he understands us. Um, when we say something to him, you know, it's uh, driven out of love. There's not a, you know, well, what did they mean by that? Uh, he's become a more of a vocal leader now and, you know, helping uh, the younger guys who are there. And, um, you know, his he's, he's got a better grasp of his game and where he wants to get to and how he can get there. His confidence level has, you know, risen. And, and so, yeah, just... And then every guy that comes on campus, you know, Dave understands, you know, I, I say that we have the saying that uh, freshmen want to play, sophomores want to start, juniors want award, awards, but uh, seniors want to win. And when you get to that, that COVID year, those guys, they understand the, the importance of winning and they really like it becomes a thing that they talk about. And so uh, Dave is, uh, 
you know, champion that campaign right now and helping us both in recruiting and with the, the guys who are on campus as far as how we're working. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com. All right, we need to give a shout out to our good friends at Home Field Apparel. If you want to look as good as possible where you were supporting Jerome Tang and the Cats, you know where to do that. Homefieldapparel.com. Use promo code 3 mon 23 for 15% off your first order. You can choose from the 50-plus K-State designs that they have out there. Or you can be like DY and branch out and get one of the 100-plus other teams that are there at homefieldapparel.com. If you live your life online at all, you see homefieldapparel.com everywhere. Uh, college sports twitter it is all over the place they've got awesome awesome retro gear that's what is in people that's what the kids are doing so we're trying to keep you cool here on the show homefieldapparel.com promo code 3 mod 23 for 15 percent off your first order one other returner that we saw really take off in the the second half of the season was day day uh where are you seeing his development at right now and what kind of a jumper are you expecting out of him this year yeah yeah, i mean uh, day day's done a great job with his body you know, like we haven't really done any basketball stuff. Uh, we started Monday was the first time we we started like on the floor stuff. But uh, he's been in the weight room with Phil and he's been in the gym on his own shooting and, uh, you know, just, just working on his game. But like his body, you can tell it looks, he doesn't look like a freshman, you know, and uh, that, that's that been, that's been really good. And, uh, you know, I, I would think he has a lot to build off of after that Iowa game. In the NIT, you know, um, you know that's that's the guy we can see him trying to be and consistently being uh, for a season, and so we're fired up about that. Well, Arthur Kaluma is a guy that I'm sure will have a chance to to test the NBA draft waters as as he's done before. What's what's your expectation for the likelihood that you may or or may not have him back next year? Hey, you know, um, every kid's dream is to uh, hear the name called uh, in June. Uh, walk across that stage and shake uh, Adam Silver's hands. And um, I, I want that for Art. And, uh, you know, whether it happens this June or June from now, you know, I want that for Art and I want him to feel like he can go pursue that, uh, but know that he has a place here at Kansas State. And so um, him and his family are discussing what's the best situation for him, what's, you know, um, what gives him the best opportunity to ultimately get that. And, uh, you know, we're just going to continue to support him and love him uh, through this whole process. And, um, you know, if he comes back, we're going to be fired up. But if his name is called and he walks across that stage and shake Adam Silver's hands, we're going to be fired up for him there, too. It appeared you had other options as well a few weeks ago, but chose to remain at Kansas State. Uh, How stressful was that process and what contributed to your decision? Um. But y'all didn't even have any like a. And there's supposed to be like some kind of segue into this thing. Like, I know, I know. You know. Just like you just rip rip off the band aid on me right there, man. You know, uh, you know. I would just tell y'all it, it beats the alternative, right? It beats the alternative of you know you guys on here talking about me being on the hot seat and you know getting fired and you know pressure on Gene to do something and you know all of that. So um, it, it's uh, it's a blessing to be in that situation, um, but. The, greatest blessing of my life um other than my relationship with christ and my, my wife uh you know is the opportunity to be the head coach at kansas state and and live life with the guys i live life with up and down that hallway and so um you know we have this we always have this saying that you know don't mess with happy you know and uh go where you're celebrated not where you're tolerated and uh you know implemented those two things into my decision making process and then uh I asked myself the question, what is the best thing for my family? And, you know, both of my kids are students here at K-State. I asked my son to transfer one time already uh, from Baylor to K-State. And, you know, it set him back on his path. He lost some credits and and all that. And uh, I just just moved my parents to Manhattan. And uh, my dad's just learned how to get to the bank and the post office without a GPS. And, you know, so, um, you know, that wasn't going to be the best thing for my family. And so... You know, there are times in our life we, you know, we use this word joy around our our um, program, and 
joy for me personally means Jesus first, other second, yourself last. And, you know, if I put myself last in all these situations, I, you know, put Jesus first and make decisions as best for the other people in my life, this one was pretty easy. And what kind of relationship do you have right now with your AD, Gene Taylor, and where does he play a part in all of that? <laughs> Man, Gene is the best. I am just uh, absolutely love Gene. We are. Um, I, I do, do believe that uh, he wants the very best for this university. You know, and uh, w- w- one of the things I, I love about him is that um, he's always thinking about, you know, the big picture, right? And uh, he's he's very honest and, and frank in how he has discussions about the big picture. And I've, I've always been a team guy, man. Like, you know, I do believe the rising tide raises all ships and uh, I want to see everybody win. And, um, you know, this is this thing is not about me, right? This is about Kansas State. Right. And uh, that's what I want this thing to be about. Kansas State and Gene is, uh, you know, um, I, I believe our friendship is, is growing. And, uh, you know, just I just I, he's a fun to be around. Uh, he's even, you know, better to work with. And, you know, uh, our staff loves him, you know, and uh, we, we, we're fired up. Uh, I can't like I don't have the words to put in the the way it makes he makes you feel you know, every day and allows us to do our jobs and uh, be the best version of ourselves. So, Well, I do have to tell you, I heard you ask this, the same type of questions with, with Matt Mosley the other day, and I, I really enjoyed him, like him, but I, I loved the way that you fired back with the list of uh, K-State coaches. I was I was yeah. impressed with that. If anybody ever questions your sincerity about K-State, man, you, you rattled them all right off and, and how proud you are to be in line there. So I uh, just had to tell you, I was impressed with that right off the cuff. You know, all those, all the K-State history that you did there. Uh, well, thank you. You know, I pride myself on uh, being a historian of the game of basketball. And, um, you know, I, I say this all the time. I'm just like, I just get to steward this this wonderful ship and program for a short period of time, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm honored to do it, man. There have been like great, great men that have come before me and they're going to be great, great men that are going to come after me. And I'm just thankful to be a small part of this. And, um, and I, I hope people understand that this is not about me. is not like, this is about Kansas state university and what a wonderful place it is. And, and uh, what a terrific basketball history it's had. And our, our plan is to, you know, build on that great history. Well, no, obviously a part, of winning in college basketball today. I mean, we've talked about it, NIL, and that's that's going to be a huge part of anywhere that you're at. I mean, how how well has K-State been able to step up and just how well supported do you feel in, in that area right now to be able to go go get the kind of dudes that you need to win at, at the level that you want to win at? Yeah, no, our, our, um, our, our K-Staters have stepped up and uh, they're, they're doing a great job. And, uh, you know, um, not just for us, but for, for all the programs. And, and for me, it's... Um, you know, I, obviously, I know that we need a certain. Well, I thought we needed a certain number to get, but this thing is crazy. I was just like the numbers are ridiculous right now. But I mean, I, I want to see all of our programs have what they need in order to be able to be successful. And NIL has filtered through every um, athletic program on our campus, and so I, I so need to encourage. Somebody's getting barked at over there. Um, <laughs> you know, I continue to encourage uh, everyone to, to to keep being a part of the grassroots um, program that we have going on, and and uh, everything matters, and everyone matters, and because uh, because all of our programs uh, can be really successful, and I'm I'm very thankful for what's been done already, and we just got to keep it rolling. And, uh, obviously, I don't think that this thing is sustainable. <laughs> well, a long period of time, but over the next two or three years, if we can hold down the fort. We'll put ourselves in a great position to when they do put some guidelines on this thing to just continue taking this thing to another level. Are there any takeaways or learning moments that you had from last season that you're going to use to build or shape your program moving forward? Um, yeah, well, like, um, you know, our, our buy games, we're going to, um, kind of do our very best to run the score up. <laughs> That's what we, you know, I mean, like you look at what happened um, because, you know, just, just the, the, a lot of, a lot of learning stuff, but I'll tell you immediately, I learned that um, we can't just win 
you know, the buy games, you, you've got to win them convincingly. So there's got to be a different approach. Um, uh, you know, there's not a, you know, sometimes I felt like we learned how to win close games, uh, but then it hurt us in the the net ratings and stuff, even though it allowed us to learn how to win those close games. So we won some really good games later on that were good wins that were close. Uh, but the overall picture in the net, it, it hurt us. Um, you know, so, so that's something that I think will put a, a greater emphasis earlier in the year of, you know, really, um, you know, not just trying to win games, but, you know, um, really making a, a statement early. Um, you know, hopefully that, that pans out well. Uh, the goal is to obviously to win, but like, you know, you see that there's, there's some added incentives for, for some of that. Um, then, you know, um, you know, you can always go back and forth, guy. You know, could, could we have had the same record if we played the young guys more? You know, um, you know, we we go back and forth on a lot of things. But um, I thought two years ago we had enough and everything fell in line. I mean, we hit lightning in a bottle. Nobody got injured, uh, put it together, and you know was able to make the run. I thought last year to start the season, you know, we had enough, and then life hit us, right? And um, we lost some guys, and um, then. You know, we just just ultimately didn't have enough because of that. Um, this year, the goal is to have more than enough so that we can sustain uh, an injury or a loss of a guy uh, if that should should happen. And last one for me because I know you got to go get more dudes eventually. Uh, but how does the uh, twenty game conference schedule play into it now? And are you a fan of that? <laughs> um, you know. Uh, that when we had ten teams and you played everybody twice home and away, that that's a grind, a grind, grind. Not that's not that playing twenty games and playing only team, some teams only once, is not a grind, but it's not as much of a grind that like they don't know you quite. You're gonna play what uh, ten games? I, I think that's how the schedule is gonna break down. You're gonna play ten games where that team's only seen you once, and uh, so they're not going to know you quite as well, right? And uh, but when you play everybody twice, man, there's there's no hiding at all. They know you, and it doesn't matter what their record is or your record is. They got to come play you on your court, and you got to go play them on theirs. And that that thing can be super grueling. And so um, with the twenty game schedule, what it did, it made us have to take away some of the the high major non conference games we would have played, right? Because we don't need to play twenty seven high major t- games. <laughs> You know, and so that that changes your schedule in a little bit. But excited about the teams that are coming into the, the conference. Um, you know, with what uh, the teams that came in this past year added to the conference, and now we're getting four more really high level basketball schools into the conference. Really excited about that. You know, Coach. Well, what you were reminiscing a second ago about last season kind of jogged my memory, and you think about just tough luck. Throughout the year, I mean, Quez Glover dealing with a couple of injuries there. Just what what was the recovery like for him, and and where is he at right now? Um, yeah, no, it was I, that young fella is um, he's he's very caring, like like he's super aware of what's around him and uh, like what his impact could have been to the team, and you could tell it really bothered him all last year about him being hurt. And to watch him like work hard and come back and be healthy and then go for a couple of days and then it get injured again and just um, you know how much it how much it, it hurt him and it wasn't because he couldn't play like I mean that was part of it but I could tell he was hurt that he couldn't help us and uh, it, it it would like it would twist my heart when he would apologize to me you know it's like you know coach I'm sorry and I knew it wasn't it was because he felt he was letting us down. And so um, I've thought our team and our staff did a great job of keeping him encouraged. He's done a great job of rehabbing. I was tell you, we started workouts on Monday and um, you know, it's going to take him a little bit, but it took all of them. They've all been off for three weeks from basketball. And then you throw them in a 50 minute in- individuals with two people and you expect them to look a little wobbly, but um, uh, I, you know, I going to have a chance uh, to, to help us next year's, you know, and, um, so we're excited that, that he's chosen to come back. 
last question for you before we let you go. How, how many times have you eaten at the now infamous Mi Casita that uh, Scott Drew took his his picture at the other day to tell <laughs> everybody that that he was not in Lexington, Kentucky? Um, you know, I I don't know that uh, I'm not even sure which restaurant that was. Like, it, it surprised me um, about that picture, and uh, that that was, that was pretty crazy. Um, like, if, if I was there, I'd have been at George's and. You know, and so that that would have been the picture would have been taken there. So, um, my my Mexican restaurant down there that I, I like to go to is uh, um, uh, what is it? Nymphus, yeah, Nymphus right there. On, uh, they have great salsa and chips, and um, so that that that's that, that's my spot. Okay, Any, anywhere you want to shout out in Manhattan, where you where do you usually uh, congregate in MHK? Um, well, my mom just. You know, my mom and dad just moved to Manhattan, and uh, so I've been congregating at her kitchen a whole bunch recently. So, um, getting caught up on all those years they lived in Florida and I was in Texas. So that, uh, that that's kind of my go-to spot right now. <laughs> okay, got it. Makes sense. Hey, Coach, we appreciate you taking the time and in, in joining us here. I know I know life is crazy, so really do appreciate you making some time for us. And uh, best of luck on the on the recruiting trail, going out and getting some more dudes. Hey, I, I really greatly appreciate what you guys do for K State athletics and for our basketball program. And uh, um, there are a lot of recruits out there uh, and fans that are fired up about what we're doing because of what you guys do. And so you have an impact on us winning the championship, and I can't thank you enough. <laughs>